ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest tonight, Zulfi Bukhari, special assistant to Imran Khan. Zulfi, welcome. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to just start off with, with a, a bit of an excerpt from the Islamabad High Court, a, a document that was released from them. This is what it says. Five judges from the IHC wrote a letter to Chief Justice IHC on the 12th 02-2024, mentioning accounts heard by us with regard to interference by operatives of intelligence agencies into the dispensation of duties and functions by judges of the district judiciary, undermining their autonomy and independence. A full court meeting was sought to address concerns regarding independence of the judiciary. Can you comment on that? Yeah, I mean, there were six judges, not five uh, reputable judges. And uh, it just shows that, you know, even the judges of now have had enough. We've been saying this for many years now, that there's too much influence within the judicial system. And at the end of the day, whether you don't have, uh, you know, if you don't, if you have this much influence and, and justice can't be served. So it's very difficult for Pakistan to move forward. The one thing that needs to be independent is definitely the judiciary. But these six judges coming over are very grave allegations and uh, have basically, uh, you know, the cat's out the bag now in its entirety. And not only have they interfered, uh, but, you know, the establishment and operatives, as I've said, have blackmailed, threatened, put video cameras in their bedrooms uh, and all sorts to manipulate judgments and to manipulate the judges to do as they uh, as they want them to do. Can you be a bit more specific about these intelligence operatives, these people? Who are they? Uh, who should we be looking at? Well, I don't know exactly who they are. Uh, I don't think they even know exactly who they are. But often, as we in, in our country, as we know, is that when the establishment is pro somebody or anti some party or pro some party or a case or the outcome of the case, then they will send in their operatives to make sure that the judgment is uh, upheld accordingly to their desires. Um, you know, we've seen that in the past. We've seen that in the last two years aggressively. But one thing it certainly has done, it's talked about a few cases of Imran Khan's as well. So one thing is for certain that everything that is going on in Pakistan in the last 24 months, in particular against Imran Khan and his party members, is uh, has been all manipulated and has got nothing to do with law and justice. Right. So, So given these tactics... Are you considering adopting a more aggressive political uh, approach towards towards battling this? Well, we don't know what... I, I'm not sure what you mean by aggressive. Uh, we are um, doing everything we can. We've got a th three-pronged attack. We've got... We're representing in, in Parliament, in the National Assembly. We are going to every single court and fighting concepts cases accordingly. We are also taking to the streets and doing peaceful protests uh, against um, you know the independence of the judiciary and also against uh, our mandate being stolen in the recent elections. So we are doing, uh, I, I would consider that an aggressive attack that we're trying to fight it on all fronts uh, peacefully and within the law. Okay, so, so within the law, it, that's the question is that whether it's the opposition, whether it's agencies that we don't know of, uh, obviously they're, they're not abiding by the law. Is your approach going to be strictly within the law, or are you guys at the point where uh, there is there is no mercy anymore? No, I mean it always has to be within the law. Um, there's no way or form that any political party can operate outside of the law. Um, yes, whatever the current government or the PDM government and everything has done, uh, abusing the law is without a doubt, but there's there's no way that we as Pakistan Tariq and Saf can take the law into our hands uh, in any way or form. Uh, how And we have full faith in our system that it will overcome uh, these hurdles. Hence, these six, these six brave judges have stood up and basically uh, and have listed, lifted the veil from all this uh, abuse that has gone on uh, behind the scenes in our judicial system. What is some of this abuse that's going on? Could you highlight this? Well, I, I said it earlier that they get threatened, the judges, for uh, uh, giving certain verdicts. They get uh, blackmailed. Um, they get cameras, uh, you know, put into their bedrooms to, you know, use it against them as material against them to 
uh, to give the order as they want. So it's 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 losing your dignity. It's losing its embarrassment. It's uh, everything. Uh, it's shameful, really. It's 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 out and out shameful. And I guess these six judges has had enough because they couldn't do anything by the law uh, and couldn't give any verdicts, which they wanted to. Probably looking at the evidence uh, in front of them. Um, so it's it, it's actually this is very uh, deep. What's happened? Uh, as as a Pakistani, you, you seeing what's going on to your country. What does your heart say? What, what direction? What do you want to do for the nation? And what can you do? Given the circumstances, we have to we have to keep believing and keep fighting. I mean, you know, freedom is never easy. It comes at a cost. Um, we believe that our freedom is right now being curbed. It's being suppressed. Um, you know, uh, we want to see Pakistan prosper uh, under any circumstance. At the end of the day, if we believe truly in my heart, if I believe that under a military dictatorship, Pakistan could prosper, uh, I would be all for it. We want to see us Pakistanis. We want to see our country going forward and competing with other countries uh, in the world. You know, unfortunately, we look around to our left, to our right. We see other countries progressing. We see uh, China has done a phenomenal job in over the last 30, 40 years, pulling you know over 260 million people out of poverty. India in the last 10, 15 years has become a real economic might. Uh, Iran, with all its sanctions, is still, uh, if you go there and you see the health and the education system, um, you know, even, even Afghanistan is uh, pulling itself together in, in, in one manner or the other. And Bangladesh has gone uh, way beyond us. Um, so when you look around in our region, unfortunately, we see that the country with probably the most potential, um, you know, and geographically positioned uh, brilliantly, it has uh, regressed while all the countries around us, despite their difficulties uh, that they have, have progressed uh, so massively. So it's hurtful. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, our goal is to try to take Pakistan forward and compete with the rest of the world. Right. If you had an optimistic outlook on Pakistan's future, where do you see Pakistan in the next five years? Look, it's very simple. If Pakistan has consistency and consistency, political, uh, if there's consistency and stability, political stability, that will bring, that will allow you that will allow to bring uh, economic uh, growth uh, or stability as well. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't, uh, sorry, I had to call him. If it doesn't, then it will um, only lead to a further decline. So I think in the next five years, if if in the next uh, you know few months or year, if things are not corrected and uh, people do not feel like their mandate has been actually rewarded to them. Um, you know, you will have this absolutely. You will have this political instability that you have in the country, and the country won't be able to progress. And what would that look like for the people of Pakistan? What would that look like for? for it will be further inflation, leading to further unemployment. Uh, your your foreign FX, you will go through the roof. You know, you're at, against the dollar. You're at two thirty, roughly, give or take, at the moment. And that will even go uh, further up. Uh, much more, sorry. Um, so it will, uh, you know, your your repeat of the dollar will go through the roof. You'll get un unemployment. You'll get further inflation, which leads to terrorism, which leads to so many other factors in Pakistan due to the poverty. Um, so it's a tough times. Do you, do you believe very tough times? Do you believe that PTI is the only solution for Pakistan? At the moment, yes, and I'm not saying that because I'm PTI, but. I don't see any other party. If you can, if there's a new party formed in the next year, two years, that has uh, that can give some outlook to the people, then perhaps. But at the moment, I don't see uh, anybody uh, else. Uh, you don't. We don't have any other party. We were a two-party system, and PTI was the third party to break into it. So until you have another party coming up, your current leadership of, you know, Asif Ali Zadari or Bilawal or Mariam, is not going to do the trick. So perhaps in the future, um, I'm not saying it because we're the best only, or that we I believe that we're we don't have any flaws. There is nobody else. There is no other party. So until other options come along, yes, PTI is the only one. If you were in a room with Shabash Sharif and Mariam, what's one thing you would like to communicate to them? 
from from the bottom of your heart it's one thing direct communication what would you like to say to them uh, i mean i think the intellect of that conversation and that room would be so low that, that there isn't really much to say um you know i would just say that feel pity for pakistan you know grow a heart for your country and really and truly you know sometimes uh, not serving it and not trying to serve it is probably the best thing you can do for it All right let's talk a bit about the legal cases involving you and imran khan particularly the cipher cases and the toshakana case what's the current status on them the cipher case is ongoing um it has no legs to stand on it's a completely uh, made up case uh, against imran khan and we know that once it gets to the supreme court inshallah it will be thrown out have you had any you're, you're basically trying you're basically trying to find someone guilty for giving a classified document which was declassified in in the federal cabinet right it's i mean it couldn't be more bizarre and stupid than that right have you had any communications with imran no only via lawyers and family what's his current conditions what is what is his current mentally physically strong as always thrives in these situations is there any particular thing that you would like to say to imran in this in this moment i mean i don't think you will get to see this but uh, obviously the whole country and people across the world everywhere are praying for him his safety most of all and uh, and look at him as the the hope for pakistan so uh i know him extremely well um and i know that these situations only make him stronger and i know he he really he dwells on these kind of situations uh, of adversity against him right. so you know we're amazingly we're super proud of him and everyone around the world is praying for him would you consider yourself as a target by the opposition but we all are i think all all the main leadership is is uh, a target for the opposition obviously closer you are to imran khan or uh, you know you get targeted more but uh, you know i've been used to it in my political career anyway so um, yeah i mean i think all leadership is i think a lot of them unfortunately have had to far face far worse than me i was fortunate that i was out of the country before anything even happened uh, i was just on a tour in england and dubai right and before i could get back uh khan sab was arrested so uh, people have gone through you know unbelievable pain in the last uh, in the last uh, one year how do you manage the stress of all of this it's a bit it's a bit of a personal question but how do you how do you deal with this for for any of the younger generations for any other party members who are watching this or people just in their personal life how do you deal with the stress you have to be mentally and, and physically very strong um i i keep myself mentally uh, very uh, uh upbeat i uh, you know i exercise a lot i get rid of my stress i pray i uh, you know look at the positives break things down um you know nothing comes easy especially in politics and in this so you know you have to prepare for your, yourself for the worst times if you start crumbling uh in the worst times then um it's very difficult to achieve the peaks that you you want to achieve so it's all a mental game and um as long as you can conquer your mental fears and you're organized um and like i said i i genuinely believe you have to be very fit uh i don't mean that you have to be an athlete but i mean that you have to have some form of exercise to de-stress and then again it believe it comes down a lot onto your belief system whatever it may be and whatever religion you may be uh, i think your belief system and your connection with the creator is very important Well I definitely agree with you about physical fitness as an outlet for stress. Elaborate a bit more about your your relationship with the creator and in in your case Allah. Why do you think uh, you know Allah is doing this to Pakistan? What what is really going on in the grand scheme of things? No one can predict what Allah is thinking. Uh but you know Allah helps those who helps themselves and we have made decisions uh in the past last 75 odd years of certain leadership so you know you have to you have to reap what you sow and we've picked such leaders that have caused the demise of a crumbling of a system and an institution uh being uh, where we are today this is not a two year thing this is not an imran khan 
uh, you know, time, his uh, term. This is not before that. This is a 75 year accumulation of, of what's of where we are. Uh, as far as Allah goes, you know, you leave a lot to God. You you can only try your hardest, and at that some point, you have to have to wakil that whatever God is doing for me is doing the, is going to be the best because your near at this clean and and you're trying to do something good. Um, as long as you can firmly believe that in yourself, uh, I think the rest is the rest you is, is to wakil on Allah, and uh, and you know Allah's never unjust. So sooner or later you will see that even the worst of times have been the best of times for me. Uh, these last year, two years, has given a lot of time for reflection to all of us, where we went, where we were going right, where we were going wrong. How can we improve things better, inshallah, when our time comes next? And and what did, and what should, and mistakes should we not repeat? So these are all learning purposes. We've had closer relationships with bonds with our own political party members. We've had a lot of leave, which creates new emerging uh, leadership. So, you know, you've got to look at the silver lining here. Right. Can you give me a bit of insight on whether there will be any more additional crackdowns on party leaders, on their autonomy? What, what's what's their movements like at this moment? Now, quite a few have got um, protective bills to move around, but I still believe there will be uh, a crackdown. I think any time we try to come out, too much anytime we try to create too much noise on the streets or in the public i think there will be a crackdown uh i'm very worried about the military courts um i think uh you know the whole may 9 sort of scenario is a very dangerous scenario to go down to to arrest people and give them severe punishments um so i think you know these cases if the law is not upheld it's very dangerous because then there will be a severe crackdown uh, and it's still happening in a different way. So every time you'll just find a different method. But you try coming out in Lahore right now, there'll be a massive crackdown. So we're staying quiet. We're doing our thing in court. We're going to parliament. We're doing, you know, organized protest. But the minute we call for a big protest in, in Lahore, uh, you know, there'll be a massive crackdown on our local leadership in particular and our, our senior leadership. So uh, it's only a matter of time again that they will start arresting all of us. They won't be able to... How they can't just let us roam freely because uh, we're too powerful, we're too popular, um, you know, and uh, and they're very unpopular. They hate it. There's not even a slight balance that you can say. It's it's actually hate and love uh, at the moment. So I fear that there will be a further crack, further crackdowns. And what's your political strategy to deal with these crackdowns? How are you going to navigate this? Well, we're. we're we're, we've navigated them for two years. You know, you, you must understand we haven't had a leader uh, outside of prison. Our leader has been inside prison for the last, you know, 250 odd days, 240 odd days. Um, but yet the party is stuck together and we've navigated it. Uh, we take every scenario at a time. We have core committee meetings. We have emergency meetings. And from there, we, we navigate the system. So it's hard to say on what scenario until it comes about. But, um, you know, uh, I think uh, I applaud everyone for doing all they can. It's not easy to all of a sudden have your leader uh, thrown inside, very little communication, um, and hold the Pakistan's largest political party together. Uh, um, you know, with different schools of thought, with different uh, thinking, with different uh, attitudes, uh, and you know, different personalities. Uh, but you know, ups and downs, we've held it together. You mentioned that the cipher cases will be dropped once they're, they're, they're looked at by the higher court. In the event that Im Imran Khan does come out, what does the the next few steps look like for PTI? <clears throat> well, if Imran Khan comes out, inshallah, then we will, uh, he will assess the next few steps. But obviously, Khan Saab will, you know, be a ferocious opposition. And, um, you know, he's brilliant at that. Um, so once he, once inshallah he comes out soon, then um, you will see that the whole country will mobilize. Right, right, right. And again, there's there's no other prospects of communication with Iran Khan? No, only through through lawyers and, and leadership that's, a, that's allowed to go see him. And what about his family? This family goes to see him, his sisters, his uh, cousins. Right. Do you have any particular messages for the people of Pakistan, people who are currently looking at their, their nation and confused and they have no idea of what to do 
or even you know people in in political uh, positions or positions of power who who are, are stuck who are, are feeling threatened by the opposition what message do you have for them I I I will because I'm in touch with a lot of the overseas I will just give them that I know they're disheartened I know there a lot of them that aren't politically involved are looking upon their country with a you know with like the stent that what the hell are we doing and what's going on there um but you know having said that I would just say that don't lose hope uh you know you have to go uh, through these situations uh to see the better days and um you know it's it's in these sort of darkest nights uh where where the stars shine so brightly so have hope uh pray for khan saab pray for pakistan and inshallah you'll see a very positive outcome at the end of this it's important for a nation to go through this uh to become a stronger one after every storm there's sunshine so yep. thank you very much for for coming on is there thank you hamad yes you'd like to share anything you'd like to to put out there? no just uh, just uh, keep raising your voice especially for those that are in prison and um and uh, and we want to see the innocent out and free thank you very much sultan thank you omar thank you